Hello, everyone. Welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you are new to the channel, welcome. It is very, very nice to meet you. And if you are returning, what's up, guys? So, welcome to your latest installment. After a very, very long time, I am bringing the Twin Flame Mirror Reading back. Yeah? uh if you're new to the channel then you may not be aware that i started um i started my youtube channel for card readings while i was in the heat of a twin flame activation um and a lot has changed since i started the channel um one thing mainly being that for quite a long time i stopped doing twin flame readings specifically um <laughs> And I'm going to be completely honest with you. It's because I was trying to distance myself from the whole thing. Um, but I will also say that that was very much egoic in nature. Um, that was mostly an egoic reaction to what happened personally for me on my journey, in my whatnot, whatever, in my activation. And if you want to call it a twin flame relationship, go ahead. Um, and that's because I was really, really working on healing and dealing with everything that happened. Because um, for me specifically, it was a pretty humiliating experience. Um, and that's a common theme for I've noticed that a lot of people that have been on this journey for some time and, you know, have had an, uh, had some time to really experience a good amount of stuff on it. Um, humiliation is a is a fairly common thing um, but then you know unbeknownst to myself or at least unbeknownst to my ego i still was channeling for the twin flame collective even though i wasn't labeling as such and even though i was trying my hardest not to do so not to look at that anymore it was still something that's coming through it's something that i'm innately connected to and i'm really not going to be able to escape it so i might as well just embrace it right Okay, well, here we are. Um, so I developed the Twin Flame Mirror reading myself in order to see how the masculine energies and the feminine energies are mirroring each other potentially, if they are mirroring each other at all, but then also to just get an energetic check-in and bring, any, bring forward any messages for the Twin Flame Collective that are needed at the moment. So as in all of the other readings on my channel, this is timeless. And I'm not even planning, on, I'm really not even going to put any sort of actual date on this. So if you want to, if you need some advice or help in gauging what messages to listen to, if you don't necessarily want to, you know, listen to everyone that comes out, my advice is to look at the title. If something in the title resonates for you, whether it's something quite obvious or it's just like a feeling that you get in reading the the title that hey i think i should watch this reading then watch the reading then it most likely has a message in there for you also keep in mind that these are general okay this is a general reading for the collective so not everything is going to resonate for you um and if you like i can absolutely do one of these readings for you i've done a number of these readings for people and it doesn't always have to be in regards to the twin flame journey um this reading also works very very well as a spiritual check-in in, in terms of um looking at your your energetic state in the spiritual realms versus your energetic state in the physical realms um realm and seeing how they may be mirroring each other or what the common themes may be in between bringing forward any messages that you may need on your spiritual path at this time i like to call that a spiritual um, check-in or an as above so below check-in so keep that in mind as you're watching this reading now the other thing that that influenced me into getting this it, getting back into these mirror readings was because or is the fact that i have for about a month or so maybe two months i did um readings that helped you or that were that were guided towards connecting with your inner feminine and or inner masculine one of the big things about the twin flame journey is finding a balance between masculine and feminine energy within finding wholeness and security and happiness contentment 
um, and, and an unconditional love for the self, finding all of this within, becoming whole within. We all have masculine and feminine energies within us. And in order for us to really have any sort of twin, healthy and stable and lasting twin flame or divine counterpart relationship, however you want to label it, you are going to need to come into balance with these energies within yourself first between the masculine and the feminine and so i was doing those readings that were um, geared towards learning about and connecting to your inner masculine and or feminine energies but then you know that started to i wasn't resonating with that so much anymore and i started to realize that i do want to continue doing these readings but i don't want to split the counterparts up anymore thus um <laughs> thus the perfect candidate to bring back into the into the equation are or is the mirror reading in which i have both masculine and feminine we look at their current energies where they are in this current moment what messages there are for them in this current moment and we see how they're mirroring each other or how they're not mirroring each other how they may be on the same page and how they may be in completely <laughs> completely different areas of existence or completely different areas of consciousness at that moment whatnot whatever okay so as always, as with any Twin Flame reading that you watch, this would best be utilized by looking at the energies within you, so the masculine energies within you, the feminine energies within you, but also you may very well be able to get an understanding of what might be going on with a physical counterpart in the three-dimensional world. But as always, it is always best to just focus on you. Focus on your healing, focus on your wholeness, your unity, your connection with source, God, creator, whomever you, however you wanna to label it, because there is nothing, literally nothing you can do for an external counterpart other than stand in your truth, live your life, and find your sense of wholeness and stay there. You cannot force someone else to go through their awakening. You cannot force someone else to let go of toxic elements that may be hindering their lives or hindering you two coming together in, in some state of union. You can't force somebody to wake up. You can't. I mean, you just can't. So the best thing for you to do is to take what you can and work with your own energies, your own individual counterparts within the masculine and feminine energies, okay? So, what I have here are my two tarot decks that are the bread and uh, the, the backbone, basically the bread and butter, if you want to call it that, of the mirror reading. Um, and I actually I'm using sister decks. So for the to symbolize the masculine energy, I have the tarot apocaly apocalypsis, um, and then to symbolize the feminine energies, I have the tarot illuminati. Both of these are created by Eric C. Dunn and. Oh no, I forgot. Hold on, wait. Eric C. Dunn and Kim Hudgens. And both of these decks are available like on Amazon or whatnot. Um, and actually, these are the original decks that I started using. I bought these decks specifically for this reading because they are sister decks. They're made by the same individuals and they're part of, you know, they're whatever, they're, 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 um, whatever they're made by the same individuals they are sister decks so um we're going to be looking we're, we're going to be looking at the masculine energy with this deck on the left which is the tarot apocalypsis and then we're going to look at the feminine energies with the direct deck on the right which is the tarot illuminati and normally i would get oracle guidance from the animal spirit deck at least that's how I originally developed the, the reading however for right now i'm being called to use the light worker oracle Okay, because also there is a type, a bit of an energy of some new um, it, it people awakening to this journey and to this collective. I just heard there is a collective mass awakening that is happening over the next several months. I want to say, wow, January through February specifically that's going to be a big time but i'm also hearing at this moment i'm channeling that this these actually this this massive collective of awakenings is going th all the way through to july that's what i'm hearing right now um and it could be that maybe you st you experienced your a big massive activation this past july but the message that i'm getting right now is that there is a there's a massive collective of people that are starting to awaken to a higher consciousness whether you want to call that the twin flame journey or not it doesn't really matter it's ultimately just a label that our egos use to help compartmentalize things but there is a, a, a massive cycle of awakening that's taking place over 
the year 2020, but may, only, may, uh, mostly from January through July. It's what I'm hearing right now, okay? So because of that, at this moment, we're going to be using the Lightworker Oracle. I expect that to change. I actually want that to change. I would like to be able to use different Oracle decks to get different messages. So I'm just going to I'm just gonna feel this out um, session by session. And I don't know how often I'm going to do these. I'm hearing weekly. I feel like that would be ideal, um, but that may not always happen. Um, it may be better to do these once a month, although I kind of just heard in a small way that's probably not so ideal either. I'm not so sure. Stay tuned and we'll see what happens. All right. Okay. So without further ado, let's just, let's just get into this. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the Twin Flame Collective at this time for the twin flame journey at this time please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved please give us a clear and accurate representation of the energies of the divine masculine collective represented by the deck on the left and the energies of the divine feminine collective represented by the deck on the right and please show us what their current energetic states are at this current moment and also how they may be mirroring each other at this current moment and please help us to bring forward or decipher here and assimilate any sort of messages that you have for us in terms of this journey at this moment in time Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, we're going to start by shuffling the Divine Masculine Collective's energies for the Masculine. I'll give this five shuffles. So that's one for the Divine Masculine. Two. Three. For the Divine Masculine. Four. And I do want to say, guys, that if you're new to my channel and this reading really ends up resonating very well with you, and five, um, I highly recommend that you like dig into the archives of my channel and um, and check out some of the readings that I did when I was doing these regularly before. I do believe I have a, a, a playlist uh, of Twin Flame readings, so just check that out and see what resonates for you. Boop. All right. Divine Masculine Collective, you are set. Next, let's shuffle the Divine Feminine Energies, and then we're going to start there, yeah? And also keep in mind that when I developed this reading, I had a lot more space <laughs> on this desk. I don't have as much space anymore. Um, so I'm probably going to be struggling to keep all the cards within the frame of the camera, but we'll just, we'll just roll with it, yeah? All right. For the Divine Feminine Collective, five shuffles. One. Two. Three. Four. The Divine Feminine Collective. Four. And five. So I'm already seeing something new here that I've never noticed before, but and it's in terms of how I um, lay out whoop, this reading. So the Divine Feminine, we start with the Divine Feminine, and I'm going to just put this over here for now for the Masculine. Just put that there for now to, so we, that we have the space that we need. But the ma the feminine, we start with the feminine. The feminine is up here. The masculine is going to go down here. And it's not to say that the feminine is above the masculine. But I, as I was just shuffling this, I was seeing as above up here, so below down here. The feminine energies represent um, the, 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 the spiritual reality, the as above situation. Um, energetic reality, spirituality, blah, 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 whatnot, whatever or spiritual realms and all that. The masculine, which is the divine counterpart to the feminine, represents the 
physical or lower realms of reality and and please understand that just because i'm using the terms higher or lower that does not make either one any better than the other it's just that but you could look at it in, in terms of the chakra system in our body your lower chakras being the root your sacral your solar plexus and we'll say half of your heart chakra the, the bottom half of your heart chakra are represented by masculine energies, are representative of masculine energies. Your higher chakras being the the upper half, we'll say, of your heart chakra, your throat chakra, your third eye, and your crown chakra, those are all representative of feminine energy or the higher spiritual planes. Neither one is better than the other. They are two parts of the same whole. And when they come together, they combine within the heart chakra, which is your center, and it creates all that we see in front of us. It helps to create us. It is the energy that we have within. That's a really interesting observation that I have actually never seen before. So I'm glad that I was able to, to pick that out here. So getting into the energies of the Divine Feminine Collective, we're starting you off. Overall, we have the three of wands and i actually i want to pull the rest of these cards before i say anything about this so we have the three of wands oh boy look at that you've got none other than the queen of pentacles and this is an energy that the divine feminine head collective has been in for some time now and i'll uh, okay let me continue underneath the queen of pentacles you have wow wow you have the three of cups and underneath that the ten of wands that's very interesting um, I do understand what that's, I totally understand what that's saying, but uh, so far already, this is very good energy. This is very, very good energy. Um, the Divine Feminine Collective is very much in a space of nurturing, groundedness, security, understanding what her worth is, understanding her value, and not really settling for anything less. Now, this is a very good energy. You have the Three of Wands, which is saying that, which is speaking to the Divine Feminine being in an energy of waiting for a return on an investment, and that investment is her own self with this queen of pentacles energy she has been able to stand in and embody this queen of pentacles energy because she has been actively investing in herself and i would highly recommend i would highly continue to to recommend that you stay you continue to invest in yourself okay Celebratory energy. This is definitely a celebratory energy with the Three of Cups here. This is an energy that is going to allow you to continue connecting with soul family, that are going to allow you to continue forming bonds and finding yourselves in circumstances or places or situations with people that serve your highest good, that resonate with you on a soul level, that is nurturing for you. The Three of Cups also represents the balance between or a union between body, mind, and spirit. The Three of Cups is also a union card in the sense that it can speak to um, coming together, uh, a reconciliation, uh, again, like I said, finding soul family and all that good stuff. Now, the issue, <laughs> the issue for the Divine Feminine is the Ten of Wands. No, regardless of the fact that she is in this really beautiful space of knowing her worth and not accepting anything less, and in celebration with the universe because she has come into this conscious state of awareness where, you know, she knows who she is, she knows what she's worth, blah, 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 excuse me, blah, 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 that is still burdensome because it's a heavy it's it's heavy it's a heavy uh load to carry um but unfortunately for the divine feminine it's necessary it the ten of wands here is absolutely speaking to how burdensome this journey is not just for the feminine but for the masculine also i mean it's burdensome for all of us um it is a heavy weight to carry because what we're doing here is we are We are ushering unconditional love into this world that has basically forsaken it. Um, and that is no easy feat. There is a lot of burden that is being carried here. And, and part of that burden is coming from the fact where it's like the feminine would love to just dive into something that feels good. But if it's not, if it doesn't support her, her value, if it doesn't 
align with her highest good, then it's then she knows that it's not something that would really be wise to tangle with. And sometimes that is a really, really heavy crux or cross to bear. It really is. And keep in mind, guys, that when I'm speaking of masculine and feminine, I'm talking about energy. I'm not talking about gender here, okay? So if you find yourself on, on one side more, resonating with one side more than the other, it doesn't matter if you are the opposite gender to that energy that we're talking about, okay? Because we, again, we, have, we all have both masculine and feminine energy within. Okay, but regardless of all the burden that you are in essence forced to carry even though yes we have chosen this okay fine but you're still forced to carry a certain burden um there is you've still set yourself up being in this queen of pentacles energy you've still set yourself up to really achieve a deep sense of greatness okay to really achieve some really awesome things in your lifetime to really receive some massive accomplishment in your lifetime that and this is not just like a a, a, a a vapid or 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 egoic superfluous accomplishment this is like major lifetimes worth of work culminating here and now okay this is a very very good thing all right so getting into the first half set, getting into the, the reading here um and you will notice if you're if you are familiar with my channel you will notice that this is actually set up just like my freestyle reading other than the fact that i'm using two different decks and we're looking at the mirror aspects of things but okay so for the divine feminine collective first set of surrounding energies for you at this current moment you have death but as I pulled death, I heard rebirth. And I also picked up on the fact that feminines, as you stay in this queen of pentacles energy of knowing your worth, honoring your worth, and not really accepting anything less than what you desire or anything less than you know that you're worthy of, you are actively catalyzing this death, this transformation in the energies and the people around you, okay? That's the biggest message that I'm getting with this death card here. Now, some of you could actively be going through this transformation that's allowing you to step into this Queen of Pentacles energy. But for the most part, the biggest thing in the collective right now is the ability of the Divine Feminine to catalyze this massive change around herself or himself. It doesn't matter. Um, just by holding your worth. Okay. Death is coupled with... Then, <laughs> yep, <laughs> the nine of cups. So you're bringing transformation around you that number one is not only serving your own satisfaction in terms of you knowing your worth, but it's serving your satisfaction in terms of bringing towards you what it is you truly deserve, what it is you truly wish to receive. The nine of cups is a wish fulfillment card. It is also a card of satisfaction. So if you are in an energy right now of going through a massive transformation and not really knowing where it's leading you toward, what it's leading you towards, just know it's leading you towards satisfaction. And you may not be able to understand how that's really going to manifest just yet, but let me tell you, it's coming, whether you believe it or not. All you have to do is stick to your guns, stand your ground, and don't allow yourself to falter here. Okay? Yeah, that's a big thing that I'm picking up right now for for you guys. It's like you're going through this transformation and you have no idea how it's ever going to lead to your satisfaction or you getting what it is that you want. I do feel like some of you are so attached to, to certain people and certain specific outcomes, certain ways that things are that you think that things are supposed to you supposed to work or the way that your ego is saying it's supposed to happen or supposed to work. No. <laughs> no, it does not work that way, you guys, okay? What you really need to do is release yourself from any sort of expectation and just focus on your worth. Focus on what it is you know you want, what it is you know you deserve, what it is you know you want to achieve, and, and just focus on the energetic state of that. Do not focus on the specifics, the physical specifics, the time period in which it happens, the person in which it happens with or whom whatever comes from, that kind of energy, okay? That is only going to inject, the more you focus on the specifics like that, the more you are going to int introduce resistance into the, your situation, okay? 
It doesn't mean it's going to completely stop whatever it is that you're manifesting. It's just going to prolong it and it's going to make it a little more difficult for you to achieve it. Okay. Second set of surrounding energies for you, feminine. In this reading here, you have ooh, the king of cups. What I'm hearing in this feminine is that the masculine is focused on you. You are teaching him here. You are guiding him here. You are allowing him to step into his true power. You are showing him the power in emotional responsibility, in emotional maturity, and in, in being able to even navigate your emotions. There are some masculines out there that are watching the feminine rise into power and 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 the value that she places on her emotions and her emotional well-being and her emotional value and the things that she will not accept in her life because it throws her off emotionally or it devalues her emotionally, blah, blah, blah. You are actively showing the masculine the power in true emotional responsibility, emotional awareness, emotional maturity, emotional foundation, emotional stability. You are, you are actively influencing the masculine to basically grow up and show up. Because here's the, here's the thing. The, the masculine wants to be with the feminine just as much as the feminine wants to be with the masculine. But societal conditioning has, has, has programmed us to believe that emotion and love equals weakness, but it doesn't. It's actually the exact opposite. And the more the feminine stands her ground and does not accept anything less than emotional maturity, responsibility, and whatnot, whatever from the masculine, the more it pushes the masculine to, to embody this energy. Wow. King of Cups is coupled with <laughs> the Knight of Pentacles. Oh my God. Look, the reason why I'm laughing like this is because when I was doing Twin Flame readings back in the day regularly, that this Knight of Pentacles was a topic of contention and he is still coming out. Why was the Knight of Pentacles a topic of contention? Because the Knight of Pentacles is the absolute slowest knight in the deck. The slowest motherfucker in the deck. Okay, y'all. I mean, he takes his sweet ass time with everything. Now, there is a purpose for that. That purpose is not wanting to make any sort of mistakes, not wanting to have any sort of discrepancies. The Knight of Pentacles is an energy in which they do not want to reach their destination only to find out they have to double back because something wasn't done correctly in the previously. When it should have just been, when you should have just done it, made sure it was done right, and then moved on. Now, the other thing that makes this Knight of Pentacles such a co topic of contention is the Knight of Pentacles can represent stagnation, can represent procrastination. And for the most part, that's what the masculine was portraying, was, was hiding behind, oh, well, I, I have responsibilities or I want to make sure I'm doing this right, blah, 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 whatnot, whatever, in or as an excuse to take forever in doing what, something that they have been guided towards the beginning that was that was a topic of contention but i'm going to be completely honest with you guys that's not really what i'm picking up here what i'm picking up here is the masculine is show, slowly but surely making his way to emotional maturity it has everything to do with how the feminine is conducting herself if you are new to this journey then um then you may not necessarily be aware or understand it yet but the feminine really does lead the way here because we are learning to embody higher principles, universal wisdom, universal knowledge that is not something that is taught to us in the three-dimensional world because we are under patriarchal control, which is very much surrounded by indoctrination uh, and brainwashing and mind control. Whereas what the, what, what the spiritual principles or the laws of the universe has to offer is freedom and um, free will and equal opportunity for everybody not not controlling anyone not con you know what i mean none of that stuff okay and that's what the feminine represents here so the feminine is really kind of leading the way that's why all this for the masculine is coming through in the feminine reading but the feminine you needed to hear what was coming through here at this moment okay okay your challenge for the divine feminine collective at this current moment justice 
And what I'm hearing with justice is allowing the situation to play out. And that's why we have this burden here with the Ten of Wands. This is, this is burdensome. Even though it's helping us come into greater wholeness and unity with ourselves, there are still... <laughs> there is still a level of burdensome energy in this massive responsibility that we've chosen to take on, yes, but the challenge right now is for justice to be served. Now, for many of you, justice is going to be served in ways that you are not consciously aware of, in ways that are actually not the way you think. Which is another reason why the it, the feminine is so challenged by releasing any sort of form of control over the situation, but also releasing any sort of um, expectations. Because the universe could end up lining you up with someone in a twin flame or a divine counterpart way, ultimately, with someone that is not even the person that initially catalyzed this for you. But when once they do align you with someone, once the universe does aligning you align you with someone, you better believe it will be just. Justice will be served because they will be aligning you with that with the vibration that you hold, regardless of whether it's the twin flame that catalyzed or activated you or not. And that's a topic of contention for the Divine Feminine Collective as well. I know while I was in the beginning stages of my journey. I often felt like I was duped. I felt like I was lied to. I felt like I was misled. I, I was like, how the hell could you allow this to happen? I, do you not see how much of a fool, an idiot I just made of myself because I was following your guidance only to come to find out that this person didn't, like, whatever. Like, topic of, talk about, topic of, the, of contention of, like, the fucking century, you guys. But ultimately... Justice is going to be served here. And the, the, the thing that you really need to pay attention to or the thing that you really need to try and work out for yourself is that your higher self, your guides, the universe see things from a much higher perspective than you do in the three-dimensional consciousness. So they're not even seeing it the way that your ego is seeing it, right? Everything happens for a reason, kids. Justice is coupled with... The Ace of Cups. I told you. So this actually is also is picking up another thing for me here. But what I'm really seeing with this justice in the Ace of Cups is the universe is going to align you with someone that vibrates on your frequency, someone that harmonizes you with, with you if they don't match you completely 100% altogether. Okay. But now also your challenge here, Divine Feminine, is to fill your own cup that is where your justice is really that is when your justice is really going to be served when you learn to fill your own cup of love this ace of cups here is a cup of unconditional love that is being handed from the universe from source to you it's child source the universe loves you just as much as it loves the person sitting next to you even if you can't stand that mf <laughs> the universe loves them just as unconditionally as they love you so part of what this journey is is to learn to love yourself and that will bring justice into will bring justice into your life no matter what it looks like no matter when it comes to you no matter how it comes to you no matter who it comes to you from when you love yourself, you set, when you love yourself and love yourself unconditionally, you set yourself up to receive the reflection of that unconditional love from the universe, period. But that is yet another topic of contention here in the twin flame journey. <laughs> and it is a challenge because in order for you to love yourself in this way, you are going to have to rewrite the programming that you downloaded and installed into your operating system, which is your brain, your conscious mind, since day one. Since, I'm not even going to say since the day you were born. I'm going to say since the day you were conceived. Because you accept, assimilate, uh, 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 um, internalize. For, there's another I word that I'm looking for here that I can't quite seem to find. But you, you, you... Ah, there it is. Integrate. 
programming and conditioning from your parents. And that in many ways happens in vitro. Is that the right term for it? In utero, not in vitro, in utero. Okay, while you are, while your body is gestating within your mother's womb. I mean, it really does start that early, guys. All right. So in order for you to love yourself in this way, you have to rewrite that programming. And let me tell you, man, that shit ain't easy. <laughs> that shit ain't easy. So that's your challenge right now, Divine Feminine. Okay. How about your closing message or potential outcome here? Let's see. Ooh, the devil. Ooh, shit. Okay. Another topic of contention, codependency. Oh, yes. So we spend so much time talking about toxic and twisted masculinity. We don't really spend so much time talking about toxic and twisted femininity, do we? I think it's about time that we do talk about that because the feminine can be just as toxic as the mas masculine. What does that look like? Typically, toxic femininity is represented by codependence. Um, that's the biggest one. Maybe in, that's the biggest one that comes to mind here. Um, in maybe uh, emotional manipulation. However, the masculine does that too. Um, spirit just keeps saying topic of contention. What I'm getting with this devil card here is that there are many of you within the Divine Feminine Collective who are at a stage where now it's time to start looking at yourselves. It's time to start looking how your, your actions uh, and, and your whatever could be just as toxic as the masculine. It's time for you to start looking at how you are codependent on the idea of your life is only complete when you have someone like a twin flame in your life. Uh, let me tell you guys, if you're new to the twin flame journey, it is not, it is not what you think. It is not some lovey-dovey uh, fairy tale romantic situation where you've just met the person of your dreams and now you two are going to run off into the sunset living happily ever after. Hell fucking no. Let me tell you, let me be the first to wake you up from that right now if no one else has been able to do it because this shit sucks. I would not work, a lot, many of us have said that we would not wish this situation on our worst enemies because the amount of triggering you are going to go through in order to find this justice, in order to find this sense of unconditional love is insane. Sometimes it's almost unbearable. This situation is going to tear you down to the bare bones of your existence and you are going to have to build yourself back up from that point. But when you, as you build yourself up from there, you will be much stronger, much healthier, much more whole than you ever were before. Mm. The devil is coupled with the ace of swords so your closing message or potential outcome here seeing clearly where your own form of toxicity lies divine feminine where are you toxic where are your actions toxic where are you codependent what chains of even conformity or codependency whatnot whatever what chains can you release yourself from Sitting here talking about how the masculine needs to let go of this, let go of that, blah, 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 whatnot, whatever. The masculine needs to change this, needs to change that, needs to change this, needs to change. What can you change, feminine? Ooh, there is yet another topic of contention, huh? <laughs> ooh, ooh. I just felt a bunch of sphincters. Ooh, tighten. Oh, shit. He got me. Call me out. You damn right I'm calling you out. <laughs> Why? Because it's going to serve your highest good, honey. If you are here on this channel listening to this message now 40 minutes into this reading, then this is something you need to hear. Okay? We haven't even gotten to the masculine let. Why don't we do that now? <laughs> okay. So now let's look into the masculine energies. And I keep hearing topic of contention. Oh boy. All right. Well, overall, masculine, we're starting you off with the seven 
of wands so already i do feel like this is some masculine energy within you but this also could be a masculine counterpart in the external so if you resonate more with masculine energy whether you are a man or a woman it doesn't matter this is i really feel like this is where you are right now but this also could be for those of us that are on in the part of their journey where they are really have a good balance between the masculine and the feminine energy okay but i am picking up that this is specific for individuals that resonate more with masculine energy just like the feminine was more specific for those that resonate more with feminine energy but you have the seven of wands here masculine and the first thing that i'm picking up for you is that you are learning to place greater boundaries for yourself for your loved ones i'm i'm also feeling and picking up for your future okay whatever however that resonates for you underneath that you have the hierophant wow underneath the hierophant you have okay the five of pentacles and underneath that you have the ace of pentacles very very good so i really do feel like the masculine here is at a point where they're really starting to place barriers and and, and it's interesting because the hierophant represents patriarch the patriarchy it can also represent um institution government religion dogma indoctrination teaching and learning higher wisdom higher awareness blah 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 whatnot whatever it also represents commitment marriage that kind of stuff but what i'm picking up on here is there is a good old boys culture represented by the hierophant that it, that a lot of people are or a lot of, i guess a lot of masculine entities are starting to break free from because they're starting to find how much disempowerment is riddled within whatever the hierophant represents how it represents how it manifests in your life whatever that looks like whatever those institutions or indoctrinating circumstances have been for you okay and especially juxtapositioned against what the feminine is offering here freedom unconditional love understanding um emotional maturity emotional the, the power in emotional maturity and emotional responsibility and all that stuff and emotional stability it, it, it's i mean whatever the hierophant here has to offer you pales in comparison to what the feminine is showing you right so this is another instance in we in where we have in which we see the feminine influencing the masculine to make some sort of change in their lives and this is not by this is by virtue of nothing else other than the feminine aligning with her highest value with her highest form of self and not accepting anything less than that which then basically forces the masculine if you want to be with someone like this you're going to have to step up to the plate somehow which is then bringing you a brand new opportunity a new start a new beginning ace of pentacles in the physical realm for many of you masculines this definitely feels like the start over or the reset button that you probably have been praying for for the longest time because i feel like for some of you you feel you felt like you've been pigeonholed by some of the circumstances that you found yourselves in and the actions that you had to take to survive and thrive within those circumstances and now you feel like you know it's all lost for you you're you're labeled or branded as going to hell blah 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 if you believe in it that way that's kind of the energy that i'm getting here and this is like this is the solution this is the reset button this is the new opportunity that that you have actually been waiting for wow masculine okay let's see what else we have for you here first set of surrounding energies for you in the in your reading you have the three of swords now for some of you i am feeling like this already is the feminine your feminine your feminine counterpart pulling away from you um it's also the circumstances by which you two have separated from each other um heartbreak pain acceptance of this but it's also you dealing with your own heartbreak okay this is and this is interesting because this is kind of something that has been coming through for the collective a lot recently within like the last month or so but the tables have kind of turned whereas the feminine was in an energy of dealing with this three of swords this heartbreak whatnot whatever now the masculine is kind of going through that because the feminine no longer wishes to tango with these low vibrational toxic devilish energies and thus it's leaving it's literally leaving the masculine to his own devices which is kind of like starting to wake him up for sure three of swords is coupled with the two of swords interesting masculine so uh many of you right now are at a stalemate a stalemate um 
I'm not going to lie, you guys, there is a bit of refusal. There is a refusal to move at this moment. There, it, it feels like there's a refusal to make any sort of change, take any sort of action, but you're really trying to... It, it's not out of stubbornness that I'm feeling this refusal. So maybe refusal isn't the right term for it. Um, I love the way the Two of Swords is depicted in this deck because it's literally someone, a masculine energy, but it's someone that is weighing his options and trying to figure out what his next move is going to be in this game of chess that we call life, I guess you can say. So it's not necessarily really all that much of a refusal. It's more of an energy of becoming starkly aware of what is causing you this heartbreak, masculine. And now with this two of swords energy, you're kind of like, okay, well, now that I understand that, or now that I'm starting to, be, to become aware of that, what the hell do I do about it? And I'm really getting a strong energy of being as logical about this, whatever move you need to make as possible. I, 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 and I don't want to say that emotion or maybe even intuition has nothing to do with it. It does. In fact, it does because being aware of your emotions is what is causing you to even look at this to begin with, to face whatever it is you're facing in your world to begin with, okay? Very interesting. Second set of surrounding energies for you, for the Divine Masculine Collective, you have, ooh, the Page of Pentacles. So, yes, you're embarking on a brand new journey, and the fact that this, the page here is pregnant, to me, is saying that you're, that was the first thing I saw, and you're really giving birth to a brand new cycle of your life. In my opinion, the Page of Pentacles is a level up, is, um, is an apprenticeship, is, is reaching a new form of existence, and kind of needing to find your footing there because this is brand new to you, sure. But I feel like your new start, represented here by the Ace of Pentacles, is in gestation with this, with this Page of Pentacles energy. Or, of course, in this deck... Um, it's the princess in both of these decks, actually. The pages are princesses and the knights are princes, but that's bas it's basically the, it's the Page of Pentacles. <laughs> okay, Page of Pentacles is coupled with the Seven of Cups. And this is exactly why you're kind of like in this gestation period because you have a lot of things that you need to decipher, a lot of emotional baggage, a lot of Ill emotional shit that you need to sort through, to sift through right now. But that is, in fact, it, I'm hearing it is actively a part of your gestational period in terms of uh, stepping into a, a new sense of reality for yourself, okay? There are a lot of, um, I'm picking up there are things like it's, it, it has to do with family, it has to do with friends, it has to do with business, it has to do with um, uh, emotional fulfillment, career trajectory, things that you've been doing in your life or things that you have been working so hard to achieve in your life that are now you're fine. It's almost, it almost feels like a midlife crisis. This absolutely could be a midlife crisis. And I am not going to sugarcoat this for you guys. For some of you, this has to do with sexual orientation. I mean, this deck is, I mean, this deck is very masculine in energy, but I mean, look at this, you guys, this is a fucking bathhouse. <laughs> You know, like, I'm, I'm just going to call it like it is, man. I mean, and if, if that's part of your emotional journey right now is accepting uh, 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 sexual fluidity, more power to you, bro. I mean, like, if you find, if you can find, I mean, I'm okay. Let me say it this way. I'm gay. 100%. Always have been, always will be. It was never anything that... I could deny in myself. I did try to hide it when I was a kid, but that's because I kept getting bullied for it until I got into high school. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck all of you. I know who I am. You don't like me. That's fine. But that's not easy to do, especially for the, for men that are more masculine in energy or masculine in orientation. It's part of that conditioning and the societal pressure for a masculine entity to show up in a certain way. For some of you, you're coming to terms with that. Page of Pentacles with the Seven of Cups. But also, it doesn't have to be that. Okay, this is a general reading, but I mean, 
I'm here I'm here to call a spade a spade, y'all. So if that resonates with you, more power to you. Honestly. And congratulations for having the balls to to stand up for that. Because no, it's not easy. But that's where this sense of emotional maturity that the feminine is influencing within you is coming from. Or that's the effect that it's having on you, okay? All right, masculine, <clears throat> your challenge here. There's the mirroring, the ace of cups. Both of you in your challenge are learning to love yourselves fully, unconditionally, with reckless abandon, I'm hearing, without giving a shit what anyone else has to say about it. Oh, yes, the ace of cups is coupled with... Oh boy, oh boy, masculine, the two of cups. So now, so, okay, so, so, okay, all right. For some of you, well, okay, uh, this is for most, for, for mostly all of the masculine collective that I'm channeling for right now. This is twofold. Number one, this is you balancing your masculine, having, finding the love within yourself to balance masculine and feminine energy within your physical reality, within your physical incarnation, rather than just keeping it strictly spiritual or energetic, you finding a way to balance and embody I'm sorry, to embody this balance of masculine and feminine energy in your physical, waking, three-dimensional conscious life. But it is also you finding a way to come together with your counterpart in the physical realm. And I recognize that the construction across the street, which is the construction of building 144, those of you that are familiar with the Twin Flame journey, you recognize that number. Yes, I do live across the street from a building numbered 144. They, tear, they tore it down over the summer. They are in the process of rebuilding it now. I recognize that there might have been a lot of um, noise interference as i said what i last what i just said so i'm going to say it again this is you coming to terms with how to bring or come together with your feminine counterpart in the three-dimensional world but but that is purely a byproduct of you finding this balance within first and yes i said that I said that as I intended to, a byproduct. Your physical union with your divine masculine counterpart or your divine feminine counterpart in the three-dimensional world is purely a byproduct of your physical union within. Let that marinate for a second. I actually, I, I, I would recommend that you pause. If you really want to like let that marinate, let that sink in, pause the video here. Okay, we're going to move forward. Your closing message or potential outcome for the Divine Masculine Collective here, we have, I, I'm going to put this, I'm going to put this here. We have, Oh, yes, the emperor. So the Divine Masculine Collective right now is in the process of stepping into their Divine Masculine power, taking their power back. The emperor in the Twin Fling Collective is a representation of the Divine Masculine energies, whereas the empress is a representation of the Divine Feminine energies. And you can say that the Queen of Pentacles, being in the Queen of Pentacles energy right now for the Divine Feminine is in fact her embodying that divine that 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 empress divine feminine energy because she is uh, acknowledging her worth basically and being that earth mother that 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 wife wifey status that material supportive abundant and grounding energy that the feminine counterpart would represent in physical terms right now the masculine is in a period of integrating with his Divine masculine power, his or her, excuse me, divine masculine power. So ultimately, whatever it is, if you're on the if you're on the masculine side of this collective, whatever it is you find yourself going through right now is leading you to this. Now, what does the emperor represent? The emperor represents the father, a leader, a teacher, a guide. Um, uh, 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 it represents control, 
Now, the emperor can be very, very controlling, but the emperor is like the ultimate father, is like the, the king, um, is the master of his own domain, is someone that, that really looks out for his, his people right is loving and compassionate he can be very stern but the emperor is the king of all kings so you best believe he's got that compassionate king of cups energy in there floating around with all the other ones the king of wands the king of swords the king of uh, uh of pentacles right he is the king of all kings he is the master of his own domain he does what he does and he doesn't let anybody tell tell him boo about it you don't like what I have to do. You don't have like what I have to offer. You don't like the world I live, the, the, the life I live for myself. You can fuck off because your opinion doesn't matter here. I am the master of my own domain. What I say goes, not your societal conditioning, not your, your need to control or brainwash or manipulate or use. Hell no. And you better keep that away from my people or you will receive a very nasty end of me that you do not want to see. That's the emperor right there. And this is who you are becoming. This is the path that you are walking, learning to be this individual. The emperor is coupled with, ooh, the page of cups. Now here, <clears throat> sorry guys. Um, okay, this is a continuation of the energies that, we've been, that, I, that I've been picking up on. Um, and I mentioned this in Morning Coffee uh, for the weekend edition for the 22nd to the 24th of November. If you haven't checked that out yet, go ahead. If you're new to my channel and you don't know what Morning Coffee is, that is a daily reading that I do Monday through Friday. Um, but the masculine collective wants to make an offer an emotional offer to the feminine. There even could be a circumstance in which the masculine wants to apologize. Because the night the page of cups, excuse me, the page of cups is a um can represent uh, reconciliation. Now, also, the other thing that this is symbolizing here is the masculine being in his emperor power, but also becoming comfortable or becoming aware of analyzing, figuring out and understanding his or her emotions okay you can see this page of cups as an energy of starting to really work on that and this definitely could be something new this could be you could be an individual in which you were very much in that emperor very controlling power but you didn't have the emotional value behind it and now you're starting to learn about that beautiful you guys very, very beautiful. Wow. I really, I, I mean, I, I know many of you don't mind these long readings. I don't mind them either. This is an almost, this one, we're, we're definitely going to go over an hour. <laughs> Luckily, all we have left is the Oracle Guidance. Um, depending on what comes out, we'll see how much longer this, this goes. But also, this was the first. I had a lot of explaining to do, but we'll see how things turn out moving forward. I will go ahead and say hopefully they all won't be this long, but who knows. And if you're looking to get a, a um, I am blowing sage ash everywhere. I have my sage behind my, my amethyst orb here, and it's just, as I'm shuffling this, it's just blowing ash everywhere. But <laughs> anyway, um, if you're new to me, if you're new to my channel, if you're new to how I read, um, other than the, the 30 or 60 minute live readings that I offer, my readings are not time-based. Um, and they're, so they're not really time-based because I just, whatever, I just go with the flow, whatever messages need to come out in terms of whatever it is we're talking about in the moment is what I'm going to provide to you regardless of the time, obviously, other than, you know, on live readings, but live readings, um, have their own value because instead of me just channeling the energy and recording a reading and sending it to you, we can actually have a face-to-face -face conversation just so you're aware. Okay. All right. One more shuffle and then we're going to get our... Oracle Guidance for the Twin Flame Collective at this moment. There it is. Ooh, very interesting, you guys. Very, very interesting. We have card number 22. And actually, I started, I started, when I started doing this reading today, it was 1222 in the afternoon. Um, 22 is a master number. It's a, it's a, it, for me, it feels like a number of unconditional love, which is very close to six. Um, but for me, 22 is unconditional love in the terms of coming together, um, 
when two become, I just heard when two become one. I don't know, whatever. Okay, but also the twin flames. Look at that, you guys. Look at that. The twin flames is our, oh. and this very much is a cycle or an experience that is initiation by fire. One thing that I really wish and hope and pray that I can get across to people in doing these readings for the Twin Flame Collective is to get you to understand that this circumstance or this situation is not about coming together with someone specific. This is more about you stepping into your divine power, remembering who you are, remembering the divine child that you are with the infinite possibilities and the infinite, um, what am I looking for? The infinite uh, manifestation abilities that you own, that you are, that you embody. Okay, this is an initiation by fire. Twin flames. I remember when I, before I knew what was happening, the very, the, the, the first thing I remember about the big, the, my big awakening was I was with my ex husband at the time. I was still with my ex husband. Again, if you are new to my channel, then you don't know, but I went through a massive awakening while I was married to someone that I was with ultimately for over nine years. Um, and I had been going through my own, you know, slow but sure awakening ever since I was a very young child because I was always interested in the esoteric arts and, and awareness and consciousness and the chakra system and all that kind of stuff. But it wasn't until I was with my ex, my, my now ex-husband, that I went through a massive, the big transformation, the big twin flame catalytic awakening. And at this time, I had already crossed paths with this person that in this moment in time, I am now aware is either my twin flame, if you want to say it that way, or the person that catalyzed this massive awakening for me. For me. But I didn't realize who he was to me at that time. And even during that time period, I was hearing clairaudiently spirit whisper his name in my head and telling me these things and blah, blah, blah. And that's a whole other topic that we can talk about later. But um, I went through a period where there was this one day where I was walking my dog, walking our dogs at the time because um, we had we had three dogs I, we i love dogs i want to get one anyway um i was walking my dogs our dogs at the time and i was in a really emotional state and i just remember having a vision standing on the corner and having a vision of myself being engulfed in flame and just wanting and, and feeling this intense desire to help people to guide people to be a to be a light bearer a torch bearer to be a beacon for people to follow at that time. Well, fast forward about a year from there, and here we go. I've got my channel. I've left. I, I did go through a divorce, um, but I have a channel now, and I'm doing these readings, and I'm doing twin flame readings. And even when I had that activation experience, I had I didn't even know about twin flames. And yes, at that time, I was watching readings and 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 spiritual teachers like like um, Infinite Waters and Teal Swan and um, and. Uh, Abraham Hicks, and I was reading books. I was reading the Seth books by Jane Roberts, which if you guys haven't read that, I highly recommend that you read those books. The Seth books by Jane Roberts. Those were such an eye opener for me. But I was watch. I was also watching readings. Um, I watched um, Angel Souls 444. She was one of the first card readers i started watching on youtube she does not do still to this day does not do anything in terms of twin flames she actually kind of feels like someone that's on that's like the antithesis is like trying to get people like wake up this is ridiculous but whatever it, it's all subjective but um like i had no idea what the twin flame situation was i might have heard about it you know, in passing in the past, but it was not a part of my vocabulary. It was not a part of my conscious awareness. And then all, and I had that awakening where I was, or that vision where I was literally on fire wanting to help people. Welcome to the twin flame journey. And so our Oracle guidance here is initiation by fire. 
This is exactly what you guys are going through. And this is why this situation really has nothing to do with an external counterpart. It is all about you and your connection to source. This individual, whether you are meant, whether you, whether you end up being with them or not, this individual is activating you, initiating you into the realm of unconditional love by burning away everything that stands in your way of embodying unconditional love. Initiation by fire. Let's give this a little read, shall we? <laughs> All righty. Initiation by fire is a life-changing spiritual cleansing. Your life will never be the same again. Allow the power of divine fire to clear and purify you inside and out. This is not a time to hold on to anything, no matter how much you once believed you needed it. In letting go, you will gain so much more than you ever imagined, opening to fresh blessings and new life. You are, like the phoenix, ready to emerge from the holy flames reborn. I'm, uh, we're already in, like well over an hour here. I don't care. If y'all are still with me, excellent. I love you all, and you get the full definition of this card. <laughs> so let's read it. You have the spirit of the phoenix in you. You are able to rise again and again, even if at times all seems lost. You are guided to remember this, as you are now being spiritually cleansed through initiation by fire. During such times, you will feel that you are being asked to let go of relationships, situations, sometimes even jobs, attitudes, and belief systems that you have relied upon until this point. You might have unintentionally placed more faith in that person, place, belief system, or identity than you placed in the divine. You might have held on to them rather than allowing the divine to guide you. This can happen easily on the earth plane. Sometimes these attachments become confining rather than supportive. In such cases, you will need to free yourself to continue your life journey. During the initiation by fire, all such attachments are burned away. A new life is a blessing, but that doesn't mean it's easily won. Sometimes the process can be challenging to the mind even whilst the heart trusts in what is taking place. Whatever has been your stronghold in life, such as family, a marriage, job security, a talent, or something that you have used to, de to define your sense of self, you will be where the fire burns. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, let me start that over. Whatever has been your stronghold in life, such as a family, a marriage, job security, a talent, or something that you have used to define your self, sense of self, will be where the fire burns brightest. Those areas will be transformed. Letting go and allowing that to happen to the very parts of your life that you are most protective of can require deep faith. You have to remember that love is real so that you can hold on to your courage whilst you let go and allow the divine to have its way. Remember that the power of fire is destructive only in part. It also stimulates rapid new growth. Healing will arise in whatever area is being transformed. It is not only an ending, but also a beginning. I want to say before I finish this out that think of, think of um, the cycles of fires in like say a desert or something that naturally has fire cycles. The fire burns whatever it comes in, into contact with, but then life starts growing from that immediately. Okay, that was an image that I was getting that I really feel like I needed to share as I was reading that. Okay, this experience of initiation by fire is the divine making its presence felt in your life. It will be one of the most freeing and empowering experiences while, I'm sorry, you'll have whilst in the physical body. It may ask you to confront your fears and insecurities as you learn to trust the divine unconditionally. Know that the universe will always provide for you and always in the way that is best for you, even if you don't understand why it needs to happen the way it does at the time. Keep your eye on the inner transformations that are occurring rather than fearing the outer changes. The universe loves you and holds you in high regard. Remember this and trust. 
Initiation is an advanced spiritual lesson. You are being honored by what is happening in your life now. You are strong enough to get through it and thrive into new life like a radiant phoenix triumphantly emerging from the sacred fire. And before we close this out, I wanna say one last thing. Initiation. This is an initiation, you guys. It is not an indoctrination. And I said that in Thursday's episode of Morning Coffee, uh, uh, dated for the 21st of November. This is an initiation, not an indoctrination. You are not being asked to, you are not being required to be brainwashed. You are not being required to be in some sense of mind control. You are not being required to assimilate to a certain way of being, a certain way of thinking, a certain way of looking or presenting yourself just to be accepted. You are being initiated. You are being asked to come as you are, to learn the secrets of the universe, to, re to, to regain the secrets of who you are at the core of your being, and allow yourself to flow with the universe. You are being initiated, not indoctrinated. With that, I thank you all so much for spending the last hour and 10 minutes with me. If you have made it this far, I love you all so very much. And I look forward to connecting with you again very, very soon. Yes, take care. Mwah. Bye.